dear friends in this video we are going to see the various defects which are generated or occurred during the casting process okay so in this video we are going to see the defects in the casting so students there are many kinds of defects which can be generated during the casting process uh, for example there are the gaseous defects there are the molding uh, procedure defects again there are some metallurgical defects so many kinds of defects can be generated we will see it one by one so let us start with the gaseous defects which are uh, very important uh, defects in the casting so in the gaseous defects we are having the blow holes then we are having scar blister gas holes pin holes and the porosity so if you look at the blow holes which is nothing but the entrapment of the air into the molten metal and when the liquid is going to solidify this bubble is start uh, dispersing into the molten metal and finally there is a bubble like presence of the air into the casting which is known as the blow the blow hole okay so this is the blow hole now if you take uh, the certain flat surface castings or flat castings this bubble present on the the, uh, the shallow hole or shallow depression you can say which is present on the flat surface is known as the scar okay or you can say simply the blow hole which is present on the flat surface is known as the scar then blister blister is nothing but again the extension of this a scar covered with a thin layer of molten metal onto it this is a scar actually which is covered with a thin layer of the liquid molten metal this is known as the blister okay this is the blister when this big air bubble is getting converted into medium size the spherical holes medium size so these are known as the gas holes okay now when we talk about so if you get this tiny air bubbles or holes on to the surface or just below to the casting surface these are known as the pin holes these are known as the pin holes and when this air or this air bubble is dispersed into the casting uh, very finely it will lead to the the porosity okay so you can see it the porous casting like idli okay it is in porous in nature okay so it is because of the less gas solubility of the molding sand you will get this porosity defect and we have seen much more about this porosity isn't it in the mold making technique so these are the gases defects we are having blow holes scar blisters gas holes pin holes and the porosity number 7 dirt okay so dirt is basically the low projections because of falling of the sand from the cope onto this casting surface it is known as the dirt the irregular shapes some projections onto the top surface of the casting because of the dropping of the sand from the cope will get such a defect call it as the dirt okay now next we are having the dross 
dross is basically nothing but what we have learned what is mean by uh, dross it is the lighter impurity present into the liquid molten metal okay so you can have some lighter impurities present on the liquid molten metal which will come into the casting this will create this dross and how to eliminate this so proper filtering uh, is provided into the getting system you know the accessories so the good skimming is required to avoid this defect known as dross then we are having the dirt sorry drop so what happened when the sand from the cope it's falling onto the casting surface okay it is get embedded into that top surface of the casting and when we remove that sand which is embedded into the top casting surface some angular depressions you can see into the casting like this so these angular depressions are nothing but the drop okay then we are having the defect known as the misrun so misrun is what incomplete filling of the mold cavity incomplete filling of the mold cavity isn't it if this is a casting so mold cavity so it is say this much part is unfilled or not filled okay so why this is happened because before completely filling up the mold casting get solidify and liquid metal cannot reach at this particular corner into the mold cavity the reason is why we know that see here we know that more liquid molten is poured into the mold cavity as pt pouring temperature which is 150 degree centigrade to 2000 degree centigrade excess temperature we are providing on the melting point temperature of that particular metal or alloy during the casting okay now what is this 150 degree to 200 degree centigrade extra this extra is nothing but the degree of superheat degree of superheat this additional heat this additional heat we are providing for the liquid molten metal to get the very good flowability of the molten metal into the each and every portion or each and every corners into the mold cavity that is the reason why we are providing this excess heat nothing but the degree of superheat so this degree of superheat what this degree of superheat will do suppose if i directly pour the molten metal at the freezing temperature or the melting point rather than the pt what will happen as soon as we pour molten metal here as from melting point there will be the latent heat loss there will be definitely the phase change yes or no and the material starts solidifying okay so it will not see whether the molten metal has reached to each and every portion of the mold cavity or not and it definitely as soon as you pour say as soon as you pour the molten metal it will start solidifying somewhere in the passage also and this passage may get blocked isn't it so not sufficient molten metal is entering into this mold cavity say within the sprue also uh, it gets solidified the sprue get blocked because of this melting point you pour the liquid metal instead of pt but at freezing temperature or melting point temperature so as soon as you pour definitely latent heat loss will be there and material starts solidifying so the even your getting system may get blocked and proper uh, flow of molten metal or proper amount of molten metal will not get into this mold cavity and there will be the the cavities which are present into the casting or mold that cavities is the misrun 
that cavity is the misrun that we are seeing misrun is a defect so what is the remedy for this so misrun can be avoided by increasing what you can increase the degree of superheat so what will happen if you increase the degree of superheat what will happen the fluidity of the melt will go on increasing what will happen when you increase the degree of superheat so what will happen there will be the increase in the fluidity of melt or molten metal and now the melt or molten metal can reach to each and every cavity so misrun can be eliminated please understood so misrun this is the defect now next defect we'll talk about we are having 10th defect that is shift or you can also known as the mismatch so mismatch when there is a mismatch in the placing of the pattern isn't it so we can have the mismatch here okay or shift when the mismatch is there so by two halves when incorrectly positioned we can have the shift so for that we can what is the remedy for that if you use the dowel pins okay to position that pattern during the molding then the mismatch can be eliminated okay then the 11th if we are having the metal penetration metal penetration so whenever our sand mold is receives the lesser amount of the ramming force so sand is uh, be there like a loose sand okay so what happened when the molten metal is poured into the mold cavity this is our sand mold okay and when we are pouring the molten metal here so this liquid molten metal will penetrate into this loose sand okay and the molten metal can reach inside this mold also will and this thing and it will diffuse the sand this will known as the metal penetration because of the loose sand so proper ramming action should be there to avoid the defect metal penetration okay then we are having the shrinkage cavities the shrinkage cavities so these are the cavities which are uh, produced say during say l shaped casting these are the cavities so the proper riser feeding is necessary so if there is improper riser uh, placement and feeding so definitely because of that some shrinkage cavities are taking place where the molten metal has not uh, or the shrinkage cannot get compensated properly by the riser that's why there are cavity left with the casting known as the shrinkage cavity so for that reason we have to uh, place the riser properly to feed uh, the shrinkages okay so this is the shrinkage cavity then we are having the sand inclusion defect sand inclusion this is well known to you whenever the loose sand is there and mold made up of loose sand molten metal having the impact on this loose sand and the sand get eroded and this sand get mixed with the molten metal and producing the sand inclusion defect okay whenever the sand is get added into this liquid molten metal producing the sand inclusion okay next defect we can talk about the wash so this is basically uh, you can see at the in the drag part of the casting and you can see here the low projections which are commence commencing for the 
the gate the this is the gate in gate or uh, the low projection the low projections commencing from the gate commencement of this uh, projection okay onto the gate into the drag so these are known as the wash okay so again proper ramming action should be provided so that we can eliminate this uh, projections onto the gates in the drop box uh, drag box okay next we are having we are having the slab uh, we are having the scab so scab will be look like this this is the thin layer uh, thin layer of material which is uh, protruding onto the top surface of the casting so this is known as the scab okay thin or rough layer of molten metal onto the surface of the casting is known as the scab is known as the scab okay then we are having the rat tail defect rat tails again this is a rat tail like projections onto the casting okay so this cast this can this rat tails can be found whenever we are doing the investment casting or using the wax as a pattern with the green sand okay so this kind of projections we can see onto the uh, castings which are the rat tail like structure that's why this defect is known as the rat tail defect this defect is known as the rat tail defect okay then we are having the cold shut defect cold shut okay so what is cold shut so whenever we are doing the multi gate risering or oh sorry whenever we are pouring from the two ends okay liquid molten metal is coming from this getting system and this getting system c so when these two hot streams of the molten metal these are the hot streams of the molten metal are definitely to make the complete casting these two streams should fuse, fuse together to form this entire casting but what happened whenever these two hot streams of the liquid molten metal are unable to fuse properly are unable to fuse properly then there will be the some cavity present okay some space is there which is not filled with the molten metal or some deficiency is there in the molten metal this will called as the cold shut there is two hot streams of the liquid molten metal are not unable to fuse or not able to fuse properly this is uh, results into the cold shut defect okay then we are having the hot tears we are having the hot tears again this is the metallurgical defect so whenever the liquid molten metal is start solidifying from the pouring temperature to the room temperature whenever this contraction or this shrinkage is taking place during this uh, cooling of the liquid molten metal so in this cooling or solidification if there is hindered contraction is occurring okay or the solidification that is taking place with many obstacles okay so because of this uh, hindered contraction the metallostatic forces are going to occur and that will lead to the some crack formation okay so these cracks are known as the hot tears okay these are cracks which can be formed into the casting because of the hindered hindered 
contraction hindered contraction this is the hot tier again we are having the cold tiers cold tiers 19 cold tiers so these are again the cracks onto the casting like this but when these cracks are produced suppose you are uh, casting is just uh, take out from the mold we break the mold and take out the casting and suppose there is a uh, dropping of some water or some grease or some oil onto the casting surface which is very hot so immediate quenching of that surface will be there and because of that some cracks are getting generated onto the casting surface these cracks are known as cold tears these cracks are known as cold tears okay and the last defect rather I can say the swell it is, it is left out defect so the swell what is swell so if the you know sand is very soft it is having the deformation property while during making the mold some deformation of the uh, sand taking place into this mold cavity so definitely this impression will be result onto the casting surface so casting will be look like this okay so when we take it out so this is known as a swell taking place because of deformation and we have to take the uh, care of the molding sand so that such a deformation cannot be takes place and you will get the proper shape whatever in the mold cavity okay so this is the swell so students in this way we have discussed more than enough defects which are uh, very essential to discuss in the process of metal casting okay thank you